I am so excited to have with me today who we refer to as the Sharon. That's actually how she's known around town where we live, but she is truly a gift. She is a woman who has been involved in the healing of many people. Um, she's an incredible, incredible person, a good friend of ours, but also a practitioner. So Sharon is an iridologist, and I'm going to let her explain that when she introduces herself. She's also a health consultant, um, and she has a private practice where she just works with people and their health challenges. And one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to Sharon today and interview her around this particular topic of detox is because of her knowledge base. And really, one of the things that, that she taught me uh, when I first started working with you about over a year ago was that detox is really the foundation to health. And you guys in this program, you're learning about detoxing your mind, detoxing your diet, detoxing your home, and of course, detoxing your body. And so I wanted Sharon to just expand on the topic of detox. So Sharon, if you don't mind just introducing yourself, tell us a little bit about what got you here, where you're at mm -hmm. today as being the Sharon. <laughs> and I'd also love to know a little bit about iridology. Okay. Well, what got me here was disease. I was diagnosed 40 plus years ago. I don't keep track of dates, but 40 plus years ago with two supposedly incurable diseases. And I wouldn't accept that. Um, not because I had the knowledge then, but because I grew up in a family that didn't resort to treating symptoms because we never really had symptoms. Mm -hmm. We were pretty healthy, ate, all of our own food. And, but I, but one thing you'll learn through this is that, that stress comes in many forms. And I was under a lot of stress and that's what triggered my autoimmune diseases. So I would not accept that I was going to be crippled or that I was going to be sick the rest of my life. Since I was in my twenties, I thought I'm going to find the cause. And it resulted in a in four, I had four diagnoses of the diseases confirming I had them, which I denied for a long time. Um, and the doctor threw my file at me when I said, I'm not going to take pain meds because I need to know what's causing the pain mm. and what I can do about it to stop it. And I knew then I had, and one of the things that I want to really expound on is that we have to have more common sense today. We have mm -hmm. to just think simply about our bodies. And so I wanna educate, if anything, on how the body works so that you can listen to the symptoms because the symptoms are education. So I started digging and the more I dug, the more, and I was led by an iridologist um, that was so brilliant. And I, I just, I wanted to emulate him. I wanted to help people because he made it seem so simple. Oh, just get rid of the toxins. And I thought I was so pure. <laughs> and I, I, I really thought I was because I grew my own food and I made everything from scratch, but I wasn't incorporating the ways, the many ways that we have toxins. Hmm. They're not just putting something in your mouth. Right. So we'll get into that later, but that's what got me going. I love mm -hmm. how you shared with me too, that you said, I was just curious and that's all it takes. Curiosity. I'm not, I'm not someone that just takes what you give me and swallow it. Mm -hmm. um, I have to know the why I ask a lot of questions. So a process of elimination is how I really have gained a lot of my knowledge is if you have a symptom. So I had I was diagnosed with pretty serious fourth stage rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. And I had all this, I had many symptoms. I was debilitated. So I knew my life was over if I didn't change it. Yeah. And pain meds I knew was just hiding masking. And so I started saying, so what would cause this? And then when this doctor who was an MD, funny enough, who turned iridologist. Oh, wow. And I asked him, why did you become an iridologist after you're an MD? And he said, oh, because I wanted to help people. 
get well. Okay, so tell us then, what is an iridologist? So an iridologist studies the tissue of the iris. It's a very old practice. It's from the 1800s. It's still taught in medical schools in Europe today. I didn't As a that. diagnostic tool, we cannot use that word, diagnose. We cannot do that, but they can. In the States. In the States. Wow. But in Europe, it's a diagnostic tool. And they look, and now I've heard that doctors today, there are ophthalmologists, there are different people that actually use the eyes. It used to be very common that a doctor would look at your eyes and say, oh, you have digestive problems or you have certain things. And that's that's kind of gone by the wayside with certain wow. institutions. But yeah, but um, but that's what they used. And so you can look at the tissue. It's like the map of the body. So what I've deter what I've learned over the years, though, um, and it took me many years doing our to, to make this connection that the eyes have. Uh, points like the hands and mm -hmm. like the feet. So we have, we have points like reflex, uh, reflex points. points. Okay. And so the eyes, the hands and the feet are all identical in their points. Wow. So when you look at the eyes, if you look at your hands, the tops that can, that's sinus. And as you go down, it's lungs. And then it's, it goes down to the bottom of the body. The, the legs, the body, lower part of the body, the same with on the feet, hmm. same exact thing. Even the, even your left hand reflects your sigmoid colon, your right hand reflects your, your uh, ascending colon, which is exactly the way it is. The right side is the ascending, the left side is descending. Oh, they all weird. correlate. It's beautiful how, how we're made, yeah. beautiful how we're made. And God gave us those points and they are powerful and they are all connected through meridians in the body. Okay. Yep. So iridology, you can look at the, all the colors, all the markings in the eyes can reflects a weakness mm -hmm. in the body. You can, they will show up before you actually have a symptom. They can, you can have a marking it's from birth you're born with certain genetic weaknesses and right. you can see those weaknesses. You can see certain things in the eye. There's a lot of controversy over it, um, but I've been in it long enough that I've proven without a doubt, because I don't ask people things, I tell them yeah. what I see. And I don't care. And they what, confirm it. And they confirm it. And they think it's reading your mind, but, or, or like reading a palm. And it's not at all like that. It's, it's science. Yeah. It's really science. That's amazing. And, and I love, it's so interesting that most of these, um, I guess you would call it a traditional modality of supporting the body to, to healing have been around for centuries. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. that in itself says that speaks volumes, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's all through nerve reflex okay. that, that it leaves an imprint yeah. on the iris. Wow. So with that in, in your practice, you see that toxins are the burden of, of the body, basically Absolutely. you're seeing that being the biggest issue. So explain, kind of give us an idea of when, when we say detox, mm -hmm. because this, I believe is a word thrown around super loosely. Nobody gets it. They think juice cleanse. Exactly. What is, how would you dis describe detox to somebody? Well, I try to simplify everything. Um, you can go on and on. We could go on for hours describing how the body cleanses itself. The body is a self-healing unit. The body wants to maintain homeostasis. And I try to simplify it by saying we are made up of cells. It's mm -hmm. the easiest way I have found to explain to people how the body works. If you don't understand how to run a, a piece of equipment or car, mm -hmm. then you don't know how to take care of it. Right. So if so in the body. We are made up of cells. Those cells, this is one of the very first things that I learned when I was going through all of my training was those cells require two things. Those cells have to be fed and they have to be cleaned. Mm. So I always tell people food in, I tell people in the office, we talk dirty. We use four <laughs> letter words and it's poop. Yeah. Um, so the body takes in food to yep. feed the cells, it has to eliminate those toxins. And it's through your digestive system, 
all of that happens in the gut. Right. So, so cleaning the body detox of those cells, if you're made of cells, those two things are important and you cannot isolate. You cannot do one and not the other. Hmm. So I've, I've had many people that have, that I just heard of someone recently that, um, changed his diet, did everything, went to the healthiest diet, but never did any detox. You come into the world season when they test the blood of, an, of the umbilical cord of a newborn baby, newborn baby. Now this was, this is years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago, it was between three and 400 known toxins. Wow. Where did they come from? Yeah. So nice. you come into the world with those. Mm. Imagine what we're bombarded with Once in our in environment. Yeah. When you're crawling around, we are just bacteria. Mm -hmm. And so we do, we do have you're exposed to 24-7. Right. To toxins. To toxins. That's, that's one of the things that we're teaching through this program is how to in a way, like let's not to isolate because like you said, everything works together, but let's talk about first your diet. Let's detox that. Yes. And let's detox your home, your mm -hmm. environment, things like that. But I want to ask you, you mentioned, you know, we have an elimination system, right? So I hear from people a lot that, well, our body was created to detox. We don't need to do additional. We're already detoxing if we're eliminating waste. Explain that. <laughs> Well, they eliminate, they consider elimination. If they have one bowel movement a day, they're eliminating. Mm -hmm. If you have one bowel movement every week, you're eliminating. Right. Okay. Food in, food out. Mm -hmm. So every, I, I like to explain again, going back to how the body's made every, every animal on this planet has a biological uh, system that is designed to eat a certain way. Mm -hmm. And what we, do, so what we put into our bodies, every, you notice all the animals in nature, they don't die of disease unless we control what, what, we, they're, eating. what they're eating. Yeah. So we have to be, we have to understand what are we designed to eat and food should be in its natural state, ideally. Now we all eat cooked food, that's okay. But the more cooked food that goes in, mm -hmm. the more toxins go in. That food is, you're not getting proper enzymes. When you eat raw, all the enzymes are there. So the more we put into the, the body, the more toxins we're putting in. Mm -hmm. So elimination in toxins, I, I wanna go into a little bit of something that people don't realize. I we treat the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. The vagus nerve is your longest cranial nerve, tenth, the ninth cranial, longest cranial nerve in the body. And it stems from the, comes from the brainstem down in through the neck, into the chest, into the gut. Everything connects through the gut. That's your hub. So all that, like we said, all that digestion happens mm -hmm. in the gut, all the elimination happens in the gut. So typically when an animal eats, they go immediately. Mm. that's optimal digestion. They've done nothing out of their natural, their natural processes. They eat what they're supposed to. They do what they're supposed to. If they're sick, they go off, they lie. They do not eat anything. They get well. Mm. If they happen to get something that's, that doesn't belong in their bodies. We, however, are constantly putting things in to, to fix problems. Mm. Stress comes in many forms. Stress comes three main forms. We have emotional, physical, and environmental. So the body, the body knows every one of those stresses. Yeah. So it, it, all three of those are connected through that vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is very sensitive to any one of those stresses, mm. or they are also called toxins. So it creates a blockage cutting down circulation, mm. cutting down elimination, cutting, that's why they say, don't eat when you're stressed. Mm -hmm. That's emotional stress affecting your gut. Your, your gut. Nothing bypasses that gut. And that's where the mm. whole process of health is. You absorb and you eliminate. If we go back to our body being made of cells, we absorb and eliminate through that. So 
toxins can be create those blockages. And once those blockage, every toxin um, competes for a hormone receptor site, we are loaded with hormones. Everything has to communicate our nervous system. Um, every cell in the body through all of our meridians in the body, and there are hundreds, they all communicate to send signals on what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Hmm. And if it runs optimally, if we are clean yep. and we are functioning properly, it runs very efficiently. But any one of those stresses, think about it, emotional, physical, environmental. Yeah. And, and most of us are dealing with and all three are, of them every day. Exactly. On an hourly minute by minute basis that if, and all of those affect that elimination, you get stressed. You don't usually, you either get diarrhea or you get constipated. Yeah, absolutely. So true. And we ignore that, or we take a pill or we do something, but, but eliminating the stresses is critical. Mm. And so that means eliminating the toxins. Yeah. Elim and vice versa, right? And vice versa. Interesting. Yeah. The so it's not just a simple, right. A simple process, but in a sense it is, it's, um, it's just how we work. It's how the body works. Well, can you expand a little bit more on the vagus nerve? Because mm -hmm. this was something that this was a brand new concept to me. Um, when I came in to see Sharon and actually one of my favorite examples of how important the vagus nerve is, is our friend, and um, we were up skiing and their son got a concussion. And so we brought the, um, the young boy in to see the Sharon, uh, that's going to be my new thing, the Sharon. Um, so we brought him in to see Sharon and, and this was suggested actually by, I think my brother-in-law and I thought, well, he has a concussion. What, why, why does he need to see Sharon? And because the vagus nerve has everything to do with it. Well, here's, what's interesting is after just seeing Sharon and getting some treatments on his vagus nerve, he stopped the vomiting. And like you said, that, that connection, right. The concussion had everything to do with the gut and why you, he was yes. vomiting and nauseous. Mm -hmm. So you damage the vagus nerve when you have a concussion and the, con the vagus nerve, like I said, is the 10th cranial nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body and it connects. It's really connecting emotions to the, to the physical body. Interesting. Yeah. And so it regulates through your autonomic nervous system, okay. every function in your body. Wow. Every function. And so when you, when, so you have a parasympathetic and a sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic is your peace and calming. The sympathetic is your stressor stress. Um, the one that's fight or flight. Right. And so when you, that, that vagus nerve regulates that the key thing to know about those two is only one can be in dominance at a time. Mm. That's pretty powerful when you think about it. You're yeah. either in a stressed mode or you're in a peace and calming mode. Mm. No amount of, and this is very known, you can research this, but no amount of diet or pills or anything can change, can change that, um, those issues if you're in or, or heal, your body can't heal if, if you're, you're in if sympathetic. you're in sympathetic dominance. So when you stimulate mm. the vagus nerve, it has a calming effect on every function. We are designed to be in a calm state. Mm. So when you, and that's all run through the gut. So if you look at a picture of the vagus nerve, you have all these meridians all over the body, but the vagus nerve is it's showing all this coming down into the chest and then down into the gut. And then from there it branches and affects through the nervous system, every meridian in the body and every function in the body. So wow. putting yourself into back into parasympathetic domin dominance allows your body to heal. Yeah. So if for people that are listening to this and they're like, okay, vagus nerve, well, What's something that they can do at home or use to help support the health of the vagus nerve? Is there something in particular or that, that they could maybe be really intentional about eliminating to support the vagus nerve? I mean, stress of course is big. So I would say maybe essential oils. Could yes, help with that. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see. 
really the, the best thing is the most important, the, the thing we explain when we're doing a treatment is the deep breathing. Mm. So, and we use oils. So in the office, because oils, your body has to have the higher your frequency, the healthier you are. Mm. We are, and that's not woo woo stuff. Some people say, oh yeah, that's new agey stuff. It isn't. We are more energetic. No (laughs) machine in the, in the hospital would work if you didn't have frequency in your body. So they say, and you'll find if I use numbers, you're going to, every time I use a number, you can find a variation of that. If I say you have 500 or 700 lymph nodes, somebody will say, no, you have 800. If you're 80% water, someone will say, no, you're 75% water. So they vary depending on who you're talking to. But um, you have, I'm sorry, I forgot the question now. The Uh, higher frequency. The higher frequency. Yes, we're talking about frequency. So the higher your frequency, the body is pretty much 78 hertz. And then every organ has its own frequency. So what we do when we first start a vagus treatment is we actually start raising the frequency throughout the body with oils. So we'll put oils on the tummy for digestion. We will then move to the neck to stimulate the vagus nerve. Lime and clove are two wonderful Mm. oils that stimulate the vagus nerve. So we put that on the neck, the back of the neck and the sides, and then we go to the feet and we apply them on the sinus region, which is brain and head. Mm. So we apply them there and that immediately, I will start seeing a release Wow! immediately. And the more, as I said, the higher the frequency in the body, the more the body wants to be normal, the more the more your body wants to eliminate and it calm itself. Yeah. So we will see when you stimulate the vagus nerve, you're bringing it into a calm state. Mm, Yep. So the more those oils allow those, those receptors to calm and clear. Yeah. So as you start clearing them, we hold points until the people will actually feel them release. You experience that. Yeah. You will feel them release. And the more you feel them release, you work up the whole body and it will start relaxing. Yeah. And people will just immediately, no matter what their symptoms will feel an amazing peace. Yeah. It's true. Clarity. I Clarity. always like to tell it, Avery, um, yes. she works in the practice with her family, with her son and her son, Avery, I was telling them like, wow, I feel like I have after a treatment, I feel like I have clarity, like yes. mental clarity. And absolutely. So that affects, we can't see the true effect of all of that, but it is profound the depths it goes to. Yeah. To just by applying oils and treating and touching on a few points. Yeah. Um, and we build on that. We continue to access all of them because these, our bodies, our cells have memories, a memory. And it is amazing the amount of information those cells can hold trapped traumas, yeah. emotional, physical, environmental trauma. Um, I remember when I, I damaged my leg, I had never experienced some of the pain in the points as my clients have. And about a week after the trauma, I started having heart palpitations, digestive. I felt a little off. I Mm. couldn't put my finger on it. I haven't had a sick day in 40 some odd years. So I know that I feel awesome all the time. And to have those symptoms it startled me. It was like, what's going on? And I had developed from the trauma, a blood clot up mm-hmm. my leg. Wow. So I thought, oh my panic. Right. And I said, oh, am I having a heart? Am I going to have a heart attack? Is this blood clot going to my brain? And, and then all of a sudden I, I really, it was something told me, what would I do for my clients? So right. I started thinking about it and I thought, I'll, I'll stimulate the vagus nerve. So I started working on certain meridians and points that are critical and all of a sudden, and they were very hot and they were painful. And then all of a sudden my, everything normalized. Wow. And it it never came back. That was a trauma, a physical trauma from about a week and a half to two weeks prior to that attack. The cells have memory. Yep. They say every cell is like, the the potential of memory is like every computer in the world 
we can wow. hold that. It's it's powerful. How the and body to is think made. that I mean, even just touching on the emotional connection to disease. That's right. That's a huge piece of yes. it as well. Yes. Um, I one of my favorite quotes, and I've had it in my office from day one, is every cell in your body is eavesdropping on your thoughts. Yeah. So the 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 thing that you can do at home, getting back to that question, is is really start thinking positively mm -hmm. because the positive thoughts through neurochemistry and science, they've proven those, that thinking, yeah. that positive thinking affects you physically. They've linked just, the brain doesn't know truth from fiction. So right. you can think something and if you believe it long enough, it will manifest. Mm. They've done that through, through cancer. People with cancer have They've done uh, studies that if someone believes they're being well, even that's how the placebo works. Yeah. If you believe you're well, you can be well. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're sick, you can become sick. And that's I've so seen true. that over and over in, in my practice that when people start changing their, their thinking. So there again, that puts you in a calm state. Yep, exactly. We are living right now in a very stressful time. And yet you can choose. Yeah. How you, you know, respond. You can choose how you respond to that. So you can, you can believe your everything is good and you love life. There's no benefit to thinking the opposite. Yeah. It's so true. I love that. So as detoxing we, the thought season. Oh my gosh. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> we have a whole section on untoxing your mind. Exactly. That's exactly it. it. That's it, is it. So it's so powerful. And, and like you said, it doesn't matter how well you're eating all the detox therapies. If your mind is not right and you're in that stress state, it will undo it. Yeah. I've had people that have eaten perfectly and I will go to them and simply ask them. So what's bothering you? Hmm. You need to stress is the number one killer Yeah. and stress. Emotional stress is the number one. They say 90 and I would wager it's higher than this, but 90% of all disease is caused by inflammation, is linked to inflammation. And inflammation is directly linked to stress. stress. Wow. <laughs> so as I said before, keep going back mm. to keep asking yourself why, when you find that answer, why that and why that? Yeah. And, and process of elimination, it usually comes back to um, a form of stress one in one way or another. Yeah. Wow. That's so powerful. Yes. It's so as amazing. just in conclusion, I wanted to, to ask you to share just briefly, because I know this is something you'd probably recommend to do under a practitioner's care. But if we go back to just really thinking about detoxing the body system, I know you're a big believer in distilled water fasts, and this is a, a huge player in healing disease essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, for somebody that's never heard of that, or they're like, what a water fast, explain just a little bit about how that works for detoxing the body. Mm -hmm. That's critical. I used to take people into my home to do the water fasting. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say that they do a lot of water fasting. Don't, don't confuse water fasting with, um, the new term today is, what is it? Intermittent fasting. intermittent fasting. So that's old, old, old. Yeah. That was one of the first things I learned about. I've done a 40 day water fast and it's totally safe. However, you have to know a lot about it. You mm -hmm. have to, you can't just take someone that's eating a normal diet oh, gosh. Um, with loaded with toxins and then expect to go into a water fast for any duration and, and feel okay. Yeah. Um, you need to, I would prepare people for a month. If they're going to do an extended fast, I would prepare them for a month, getting their bodies, eliminating as many toxic things in their diet as possible, mm -hmm. and then getting down to pretty much raw fruits and vegetables or juices or smoothies, and then their body's ready. Now, if you do a short one week, I would say it's fine to you want to eliminate the most complex foods, which is meat, um, free up the digestive system, calm the body, eliminate as much as possible. And meat is the hardest food to digest. So eliminate that, go to fruits and vegetables, 
And in a week, your body's ready. You could safely go into a, a fast for a few days. Water fasting, water is crucial. We have, we are, again, the it's questionable what the number is, but 75 to 80% water, very important. Water does three things. It, it carries nutrients to the cell, helps to carry waste away from the cell and it hydrates the cell. Mm. The cleanest water there is, is distilled. This is controversy beyond controversy. I have interviewed doctors, scientists, chemists from everywhere to almost to disprove what I believed that distilled water is the best water, but I needed to know for certain because I was going to do it. And that yeah. was one of the things that I did over 40 years ago and was to start drinking the purest water. And so anything beyond H2O is considered a total dissolved solid, a, a toxin in the water. So I am, and you know, in my office, I have jars of the minerals that come mm -hmm. in water. Those are toxins. So the body forms gallstones, kidney stones, mm -hmm. arterial plaque, plaque on your teeth from those minerals. So that is something I stand firm on. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients, if you choose to drink other water, that's your business. <laughs> um, it's totally your, your, your business, right. your choice. Um, however, we, you, we quickly become water snobs in my office. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when you eliminate those toxins, your body responds so well, everything yeah. improves. And so I, the, the fasts are putting, you don't want to add toxins while you're trying to remove right. them. So I, I encourage people to drink totally distilled water while they're doing a fast. Um, and all the fasting giants of the world that have done this most of their careers will tell you that. And so uh, resting during a fast is critical. Mm. You're, if you're, your body has so much energy, so you have nerve energy and regular energy, you can digest, you can do your work. All of that is one form of energy. But when you're, when you stop those processes, your body immediately goes into healing. Hmm. That's why animals in nature will go off and not consume anything. They may not even drink. They may just rest yeah. and they heal. The minute you remove the digestive process, which takes more energy than anything else, your body knows it's going, it's going to go into healing. Wow. And it's powerful. It's yeah. very powerful. And I've seen many diseases turn around just from fasting, mm. but it has to be done. As you said, it has to be done with guidance with someone yeah. that knows that's familiar with the body and ketosis and all of the processes during right. that fast. It needs to be done carefully and not to do intermittent fasting and a day a week set. They, they used to say gives you 10 years extra wow. life. Um, and it is excellent to do that. I, I can't emphasize yeah. that enough eating, eating less. Um, and certainly not if you know, digestion takes, um, the most energy of yeah, all, right. Then if you're eating constantly, your body's in a constant state of digestion. And also there are three body, there are three eight hour cycles that your body goes through and they've done, they've studied this through blood. So there are, there are, and it goes against, again, I tell people when they come to the office, you're going to hear things yeah, you're going to disagree challenge with everything. that will yeah. challenge everything you've ever heard. And that's okay. I say, yeah. research it and test it out. Mm -hmm. So three, eight hour cycles. Um, and that is through from, and you've heard a lot about these cycles, but never probably heard the full, full explanation of them, but from four, from, let's say you've heard, let's start with the eight o'clock at night. You've heard, don't eat after yep. eight o'clock at night. So from, it's interesting, eight o'clock at night to four in the morning is an eight hour cycle. And that is when your body is actually using the nutrients and converting it to energy. So from 4 a.m. to noon, the next day is another eight hour cycle. That cycle is actually taking 
um, the, from 4 a.m. to noon, your body is actually detoxing. Hmm. So that's why people, if they have one bowel movement a day, guess when they have it? In the morning. In the morning. So your body is trying to eliminate in the morning. So I am not, and, and again, you can do whatever you want, whatever feels best for you. But in the, there are a lot of processes that happen that will confirm that these are the things you should do. Um, from 4 a.m. to noon, your body should be detoxing. So don't overdo it with a big breakfast because yeah. once you start eating, your body goes into digestion, right? Which takes energy and takes it away from the detox. Takes it away from the detox. Yeah. So that to me, it's a very controversial topic, but to me, that is one important thing that I've taken people that have low energy, feel horrible, can't get up in the morning, can't get going and, and told them how to do this. Yeah. And they, they all of a sudden have this unleashed energy. It's so true. I've experienced yeah. that. Yes. And so then from noon until eight is another eight hour cycle. And that's, that's when your body should be taking food in. Hmm. And so during those night hours, so it's interesting if you look at like insulin cortisol relationship. So insulin is released in the morning hours. So during those morning hours, to, they say, well, where do you get your energy to get to noon or 11 o'clock, depending on when you get up? <clears throat> because insulin kicks in. Hmm insulin, the, the cortisol is highest in the morning. It, it triggers the insulin response. Insulin is releasing that glucose. So you have that energy is there in wow. the morning. If the cortisol is high at night, you have a problem. Yeah. If it shouldn't be high at night. So that changes that whole mechanism of energy exchange by being high at night, low in the morning. It doesn't trigger that. In, that cortisol triggers the insulin release. Wow. Which gives you energy in the morning. So that could just by intermittent fasting could help switch that back. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That's powerful. Yeah. So I have had people that are extreme heavy workers, men in particular, they can't, they can't lose weight or they can't, they have no energy and they're hungry all the time. So I will switch them and say in the morning hours. So fruit has its own enzymes. So in the morning hours, if you're going to have anything, it doesn't work, take a lot out of your body to have a smoothie right. or a juice that's considered almost pre-digested. It's very easy on the body. Got it, it. It's because it has its own enzymes. It has so its, it's own enzymes. It's not requiring a lot of energy exchange. So um, I tell people you, it, fruit passes from the stomach to the intestines in 20 minutes. Wow. So it doesn't require hours and hours of digestion. So it's very, it doesn't, mm. it doesn't really decrease your energy. Um, it's instant sugar too. Um, and that sugar with, with fruit, with the fiber is a concentrated sugar. So it's not, it's not like form. the, exactly, exactly. Like processed sugars. Yes, exactly. And so they can have that in the morning if they have to, but I will test them and say, try waiting until 11 at least to have your have a meal. And what they've noticed is when they stop that digestive process in the morning, they start having more bowel movements. They all of a sudden they start having this energy in the morning and then at noon they're eating, mm. which is appropriate. And then they have, then they'll wait until four or five hours and they'll have their dinner. And if they want to have a piece of fruit in between, fine. But if they follow that changes, changes everything. They, yeah. they, I mean, I have unlimited energy all the time. And, and this is true, by the way, I've seen her. And um, <laughs> people always, I, they tell me I should bottle my energy and, sell and, it. Yes. and I can go, I can easily go a day or two days sometimes without really consuming much food. But you look at what we're doing. We're working in an office. We're walking around in an office, but we're not doing a lot of physical work. Yeah. And people that work out, I've even had them try it just as an experiment why don't you just try doing your workout in the morning, going to a gym, doing all of this and see how you feel. And it takes a little bit of your body to, to adjust to these cycles. But once you do, you're working with your body mm -hmm. for optimal elimination, absorption, all of that. Yeah. 
and you will res most, I would say most people totally respond in, an, in a positive way. I, both Josh and I, we always work out in a fasted state and we were traveling recently and we had breakfast because it was at this nice hotel and we wanted to enjoy. And then we worked out and we both were like, Oh, this is awful. <laughs> and, and exactly quick to switch. And when do you feel energy after a big meal? Oh my gosh. Never. No, exactly. So once you eat, the body does go into that digestion and it takes time to it really takes time for that to convert to energy. Yeah. Wow. So, and when you follow these processes that again, back to detox, that facilitates the whole body functioning the way it was designed to function. And really you could even consider that the foundation, right? Is if you allow your body to do the work it was created to do, it knows to do. Exactly. And even just starting with following that cycle, 8 p.m. to noon, don't consume. Yep. Well, that rhymes. 8 yeah. p.m. to noon, don't consume. <laughs> there we go. There you go, season. <laughs> All wow. these little new, yes, I always have to have these little devices to keep those, everything in memory. And yeah. that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, this was amazing. Aww. Thank you so much. I feel like all the things we covered, I mean, that, that in itself is worth it for everybody yes. listening and absolutely such amazing information. Detox is, um, take charge of your health. Um, and I want to glance at notes here because I want to just see if there's anything, um, that I really felt, um, just knowing that the body is always trying to heal. You are always, mm -hmm. everything compensates in the body for what we do wrong. Yeah. And right. when we do that, we are compromising every function. Mm -hmm. So you you want to, you want to clean up the lymph system. You want the blood to, you have more lymph fluid than blood. You have double the volume and that's your elimination. That's yeah. your, that's your detoxifier. And so by by drinking pure water, you're flushing that out. Um, but it's disease is not disease and sickness is not normal. And I, I, I can't emphasize that enough season. People assume that disease is something we go through and, wow. and, and that having all these ailments, all your symptoms are just, it's education. It's teaching you what you've what probably we've done wrong. Yeah. And so don't, don't take something just for those symptoms, right? Be proactive and do the detox and the foods eat properly. Um, there are more things to do. There are, there is another aspect of this too. The eating is combining foods, right. learn how your digestive system, uh, how important it is like when does your body need to be acidic? Mm. Well, when you're digesting proteins, you need more acid, right? When you're eating carbohydrates, you need more alkal, more alkaline and, you know, alkalinity in your system. So there are certain combinations of food, eating fruit. If, if I have to say one more thing about toxins, eating fruit by itself is crucial or before other meals, a, a meal. Yeah. Um, and that is because fruit does contain its own enzymes. So it wants to pass from the stomach to the intestines quickly. Whereas a meal takes longer. Fruit has its own enzymes. It passes very quickly. You want, you don't want to put something like that on top of a meal that's mm. going to take eight hours. Right. Interesting. It ferments. Yeah. It creates toxicity, creates bloating. It keeps creates gas. Yeah. So eating that's, I say to people, if there's a couple of things you can do to immediately start a detox process is eat your fruit by itself or before half an hour before other foods. It, um, when you're eating, this is a toughie because we do combine our meat, our protein and our starch together. However, protein does it's like taking a positive and a negative. Right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They, and so if you can eat a, a starch, a potato with salad and vegetables, if you want to have a steak or something, meat, have that with a starch. salad and a vegetable Yeah. and you're optimizing 
your digestion, you're optimized, you're taking, you're, you're actually allowing more energy in the body. Yeah. It's easier on your digestion. More energy will come from it. Um, more, better elimination. And doing it within those hours of eight. To exactly. Noon. Exactly. That'll be, I really do believe, I mean, we know, but that people will see a huge difference just doing, those just steps. doing those things and, and disease. I have seen disease season. The body is so amazing. Don't ever underestimate the power of the body to heal. Um, I've seen people with weeks to live turn around. Wow. Um, and it's, it's powerful. And if you follow the rules of the body and you learn how it works and what you can do to help it, yeah. it's, it's just incredible to see. It's beautiful. Well, we, as we close, I want you to share the quote. Um, it's sitting, it's in the wall next to the, the foot bath and it's the quote about science and God. Oh, it's like, I one think of my it's favorite. science is man's attempt at understanding what God created. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> I love that. It's yeah, so good. It's powerful. And it's so true. So, so true. true. There, there, there are ways from understanding there is so much to the body, but in a sense, it's simple. Yeah. Um, and don't, don't get stressed over doing this. Um, when you start detoxing and you start introducing certain detoxes, it can be, you could say, I want to start, uh, I want to start by eliminating if you eat sugar every day of the week. And some people do Yeah. or three times a day, it's an, just say, Oh, you know, I'm going to just take a week and I'm not going to have sugar one day a week. Yeah. Um, if you have, if you feel you do any of these, these things that you feel, you know, in your heart is wrong, just change them. Start once I say, I tell almost every client, this going slowly in the right direction mm -hmm. is far better than going backwards yeah, or not going so anywhere. True. Take it step by step, yeah. choose what you can eliminate with no stress. It's so true. And just do it. Yeah. And then slowly at the end of my seminars, I used to always have a list of all these things that they could start doing using real salt instead of uh, white salt, using the natural sugars, um, eliminating if they drink every night of the week, eliminate that, eliminate two nights or whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. But take those but little steps, somewhere. but start. Yeah. And if you've never done a, a detox, <laughs> a cleanse, then there are heavy metals. Think about from birth. If you come into the world with three to 400. Oh man. Um, and then you've lived, I mean, I won't say how many years I've lived, but <laughs> you know, if you've lived this many years and you've never, I have people in their sixties that have never done a detox. Wow. That's, That's a lot of accumulation. Yeah which it's not going to change overnight also. No, you just start mm -hmm. and you start aiding the body to do its own work. And then you start doing a heavy metal detox. You start yeah. doing a parasite cleanse. You start doing these other, get your bowels working every day. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's big a step huge, for some people. I know. Drink more water. They say drink, you probably have told most of your people this, but drink half your weight in ounces. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, that's a huge step. Oh yeah. Huge step and drink pure water. And right. so those are all things that can really start, start it all going in the right direction. I love it. And it, and embrace it. Love it. Yeah. Feel great about doing that when you start changing things. Um, yeah. And the detox causes some symptoms sometimes. Oh, totally. And you don't be afraid of this. Yeah. You, you may, better. you may feel worse before you feel better, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It is so worth it. People mm -hmm. don't realize I've learned this. They don't realize how bad they feel until they feel better. Exactly. I tell people, I don't think, you know, I don't, rem I don't know. I've never taken an antibiotic. So I don't, I can't appreciate what that, what that does to you. I know what it does on paper. Right. Um, but I've not had sickness for so long. I haven't had a headache. I don't know what those things feel like really, but you have no idea how fantastic you can feel. Yeah. You can have an abundance of energy, sleep well, wake up and just go, 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 go and feel wonderful. Yeah. And that is worth those changes. 
totally it is. is worth those changes and don't let anyone take your power to do these things for yourself yeah learn learn how how the body works don't don't just take a take ask yourself um if you have a headache why would i have a headache yeah am i dehydrated um have i been stressed um a, a fever why do i have a fever the fever one thing about the fever is um Every degree of heightened fever, the uh, temperature that you have strengthens your immune system. Mm -hmm. And a fever is just going after it's the body will do what it needs to do. Yep, the body it doesn't out. normally hurt itself. Yeah. Um, the body knows how to take care of itself. So when you've got a symptom, you should learn from that symptom. Yeah. I love how you said that, that a diagnosis, a symptom should be an education opportunity. Oh, learn from it. Yeah. Those, I try to teach all of our clients what those mean. Yeah. Um, I, that's how I know what caused their problems is find out what they've been exposed to. Yeah. What, you know, what, look at their eyes, see where, if they are very toxic or they have a very weak um, immune system, then you've got to go more carefully and to, right. to take care of it. But it's, it's such a beautiful thing when you get used to thinking differently like this and not just saying, uh, rush to a doctor to get yeah. a pill, a, a quick fix. Yeah. It's usually, it's a temporary quick fix. <laughs> and it is usually led in fear and yes. you want to teach people to be educated and empowered. Yeah. The fear is, is stress. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Which just that cycle. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. This is oh, amazing. You're so welcome. Such a great yeah. time. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. I'm as well. very passionate about it. And you can, you, there is so much to learn. And um, the more people open their minds to the simple things. Yeah. Go back to the simple. People didn't need social media and didn't need all of this information. They did what their gut told them to do. Right. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, exactly. So true. Well, thank you again. Oh, you are very welcome.